Welcome to product review by Watt Hour. In this video, we are going to do the review, assembly, and test of this Raiden RD6018 60 volts 18 ampere uh, power supply with constant current, constant vo voltage, over voltage protection, over current protection, battery charge feature, and much more. I'm going to show you the assembly, I'm going to show you all the settings. Then I'm going to show you how to charge a battery. After that, we are going to download the software, the PC software, connect via USB, test it and show you how to set the value. And also then we're going to test it, test the Android app and also iOS uh, Apple app. Let's get started with this. This is a bench power supply that is sold depending on option between 70 to 200 dollars whatever option you select so the panel is sold separately and then you can buy the case you can buy the power supply that is inside it depending on your need because there are different versions of it available and that will determine how much power this can supply for you you can use it with your own power supply just connect the input and it will work fine because it doesn't have any uh, communication with the power supply and this is very easy to use accurate cost effective i believe device because it has it comes with a very nice pc software that you can set a lot of feature of it once we complete the tutorial and the review you will see a box something like this this is an affiliated link where you can purchase this with different options uh, here if you just want the front panel it's 82 dollars with 31 dollar canadian shipping and this one is with wi-fi 39 dollar is only the case you see the shipping is not changing so they have a fixed shipping and this is 60 dollars 800 watts so you can get only 12 ampere with 60 volts this is with the case 111 this is case wi-fi and the device no power supply and here this is power supply case and device no wi-fi and this one has everything with 800 watt power supply as you can see here 168 plus this so if this is 170 plus this 30 that's 200 us dollars you are getting this if you want to purchase this the link is below the video in the description so i can get also commission from your purchase from 6 to input can be from 6 to 70 volts and output from 0 to 60 volts and output current 0 to 18 ampere if you do not get the power supply you will not get 18 ampere and this is output range so just multiply 60 by this voltage and you will get a power input measurement resolution the display that shows it's 10 millivolts and output voltage setting and measurement is 10 millivolts and 10 milliampere for the current battery voltage me measurement resolution when you go in battery mode again it's 10 millivolts automatic cutoff current below 100 milliampere when charging ripple at 6 ampere 250 millivolts let's see working temperature up to 40 degrees celsius so the sensor that you connected can measure from minus 10 to 100 degrees celsius or 200 degrees fahrenheit and the accuracy of that sensor is plus minus when you set the constant voltage it takes two milliseconds with a load of 0 0.1 to 5 ampere again now this talks about constant regulation current mode load regulation that's a full voltage and current so when you monitor a battery the capacity would be up to 10,000 ampere hour and 10,000 watt hour capacity error 
When you use it as a back converter, voltage drop is, it is greater than 1 volt and 10%. So whatever between input and output, there is 1 volt. So 1 volt time 18. So that's 18 watt waste if you go with the maximum. Screen brightness 0 to 6 levels. LCD. Oh, everybody just use HD. High definition 2.4 inch. Weight 680 grams. And that's a dimension. I received them as two packages. So this is one, one package. And this is the other package. Let me show you this one first. With the main case, very solid built, nicely cut, manufactured. This hardware this is the bottom of the case. This is really well built. So they already mentioned where to get the PDF manual for this. I purchased the Wi-Fi version. So this is the, the front panel. You can see the quality of craftsmanship and design. Let's open the second box. So this is the actual converter, 110 volts and 220 volts. Extra resistor here, given instruction to connect it. Instruction on how to set the voltage, be careful. And here are the inputs for this. This has some adjust potentiometer here, an LED. These two pins or three pins for positive three pins for ground or common earth and these are live and neutral for AC input. Select this based on your region in Canada the voltage is 110 volts 120 so this is rated at 115 so I'm setting it here. So this resistor it says connected between positive and negative to reduce the noise when there is no load. In general these are the main terminals for input and output. This is the connector for the uh, NTC temperature sensor. We have a relay for disconnecting for protection. And we have one fuse here and one fuse in here. But we have a fuse socket that you can insert it without desoldering this, so you can insert another fuse. We have a battery for RTC for the clock to uh, save the time. In order to open this, these three terminals have been soldered and in, this, in this area. So we have to desolder all this in order to remove it, and that is not easy. The first thing we do is install the power switch and the AC connector. Power connector will go from here and it needs two screws and then we have a power switch. Just insert it, it will be snapped. So I put on on this side. So I put on on this side, I know every time I just press it, I know on the right side it will be on. Here it says connected between positive and negative.
we are connecting it through these bolts this brown wire will be connected to this switch the brown wire is connected to the switch we have one more this piece of brown wire we will connect it from the switch to this this is earth or ground that will be connected to this spot and blue will be connected to the last one so AC is already connected this is very decent multimeter with a price of around 30 to 40 dollars let's set output voltage to about 68 volts So I set it to 68. Let's put the battery. This is CR1220, 3 volts. Good, that's 3.2 volts. The battery will be inserted positive at the top, negative at the bottom. And it will snap. I have this Wi Fi module. You can't go wrong with this, just set like this. The two wires on this side, these are negative, these two on this side are positive. To insert this, this side is up. Let's just insert it like that. It will snap once and twice and it will set. Inserting the wires are not hard. And I have inserted two wires on this side, the positive and negative on this side. And if you want to measure external temperature, there is this piece that you can attach and here at the bottom at the back which I forgot and this can be connected to the sensor and you connect this sensor externally it should be for inside to give you the temperature of the device I'm going to attach it to this point of the the, the foot pads close this let me just uh, connect the power and turn this on Bismillah. So it turned on. Now that's fine. Assemble now this one. For temperature sensor, I'm going to attach it to the body of this power supply. So it will be attached to this heat sink and we will get some reading, but because we need some uh, thermal compound to properly transfer all the heat. And the power supply is now fully assembled. This is the output voltage, output current, output power. This is the input voltage that is coming from the power supply. I use it in this case. Sometimes people use it with external 
power supply, this is the voltage set. The voltage that you set will be displayed here, but this can change. But this is your setting. This is the maximum current, the constant current. This is the over voltage protection, and this is the over current protection that you set. This, these three icons, this is for memory. When you load any memory from uh, presets, it will display that is available. Constant voltage, over voltage protection. This will highlight it that over voltage protection is on. If I turn this on, now this disappeared. And this is a battery indicator. When, the, when you connect a battery, it will turn on. Let me show you. Now I have connected a terminal here and I have battery so I'm connecting it as soon as I connect it you can see that this is on this area is as you can see is being updated watt hour ampere hour temperature Fahrenheit and Celsius is displayed to set our uh, voltage we press I set V set and as you can see this is now activated I can rotate it or I can go with this arrow key and change this to set the voltage because this is now active we can see it if I turn it off you will not see it now let me explain the settings for this first let's have a look at the interface we have the keys we have up and down left and right enter this is a rotary encoder we have on off the three terminals we have one for the battery this is the negative the positive when you use it for the battery we will use we will use this two and when you power something else use these two then we have shift memo current set i set and v set all the keys have extra functionality m1 m2 m3 these are the memory presets and then we have menu lock these will be accessed when you press shift to access any of the memories just press m and go to that memory when you press m mem will appear on the screen activate the output press on and whatever voltage you have here will be displayed and this will have the output voltage let me press this again once you set for example 12 you can press to exit this knob to set the current we press i the same way let's say you want to set it to 10 ampere press and it's set the highlight disappears over voltage protection and over current protection is a value that you set so you cannot go by mistake higher let me give you an example this is now 12 let's set over voltage protection i'm pressing shift o v and this is now here let's set it to 15 volts so now over voltage protection is 15 volts if i go and set the voltage to higher than 15 And if I turn this on, automatically over voltage protection will kick in and will turn off the output. Let me change it. I set it now to 50. And the same way for the current. I press shift and this. let's say you never want to go above 10 amp set it and it will be set to that value now let's set one of the memory for example m7 for 12 volts and 2 ampere and you work always with that so you can set and recall 12 and enter automatically it will enter the zero now uh, 5 ampere let's say i is equal 5 and enter the 5 will be 5 ampere and if you want to set 0 0.5 just i set 0 0.5 and enter it will be 0 0.5 so you can enter it directly now the value is set 
because the output is not on we don't see it if I turn on you will see the on here now we want to save it to any of this, these memories to save that we press mem and f7 it says store if you want to accept that press enter and then with this arrow we can come to uh, cancel I'm there pressing enter now m7 have been used now to recall m7 press shift and m7 shift m7 now it says over voltage protection also it is set with that value over current protection is also set press enter now it shows m7 is activated the value is here so we can set over voltage over current protection all of the values for certain um, memory sets from m1 to m9 now to lock the keypad press shift and lock the lock appears now this doesn't work any of the button you press it, it says press shift and lock to unlock it so I'm unlocking this now let's go to the menu to go to the menu press shift zero and that is the menu for with the, all the settings take ok <laughs> take ok this is when you save a value when you press memory it will allow you to accept it otherwise it will not accept the output or will not save it let me turn this off now when you are here press enter the highlight will appear with a, with a knob now this is off to exit press this button and press it again you will exit now let me see memory 7 memory shift 7 memory have been loaded here it will not ask if I go up to uh, shift 8 memory 8 came uh, without telling me now if I go to the shift menu and now shift 7 you see this screen pops up and it will ask you if you want to confirm or cancel so let's go again back shift menu let's go to the next item sorry menu enter and down take out it says take out enter and enter now if I go to let's say memory 7 when I recall it automatically the output even though you see the output is off press shift this value memory 7 12 volt 0.5 enter automatically the output is turned on but if you want to disable it go to menu and here turn this off and it will not be turned on boot power this is the option that uh, will automatically turn uh, on the output when you power it up so let's go there and enter enter now it's off turn off let's say turn on and you will say that see that the value that you have automatically the output is on I turned it off Sh shift menu I don't want that and then the next option is for buzzer so now when you go here it will be turned off I like it it should be on logo on that's the logo when you boot up the logo is displayed and if I turn it off now if I turn on now you will not see the logo it will come directly to this if you want this to be fast just disable it and then the language press enter we have Chinese German French and English and then we have brightness this is setting the enter brightness so you can set it let's set it for now the maximum brightness now I can go with the arrow to the right to see the maximum power whatever power that you want that will be multiplied voltage times current the maximum 
Update rate, this is the update rate, how fast it should update the settings, slow, medium, high, so slow. This is the time and date, let's set the time and date, October 18th, 22 and So I said that the address is for the uh, Wi-Fi uh, channels that you use. So we can set from zero to from one to I believe 255, 255. And this is a baud rate for USB. We can change different baud rate. And the interface is selected from here, so we can set Wi-Fi. You see the sign or RS485 TTL, which I don't have those options. We have only Wi-Fi or USB. Now, from this screen, I can press OK. And now this highlight has disappeared. Only this is red. We can go to the right. In this screen, this is now highlighted eye out, and we, we can have the graph. Press this, so th the enter, it will be highlighted. Go to the right and then enter press and exit now we will have the graph if the voltage and current is going up and down you will see it here menu let's go back and enter now that is highlighted and selected so i can now the red is here i can go to saved memory we can set all of these directly here with uh, voltage current a constant voltage constant current over voltage and over current protection here for all of them from zero to nine you can see five here five here and we can press enter it will be highlighted go down read the value let's say number four to check to set it we just set Press V for voltage. Let's say you want to set this to 36 volt. So let's set it to 40. It's channel 4. I want to set it to 40. And then current 4 ampere. And to set over voltage and over current, press shift. Now, over current and over voltage, let's say I don't want anything above 40, 42, and press OK to exit from this setting. Now we can set the other one as well by going with the arrow and setting it. To exit, press and press. Now the value is set. So to, to recall, let's recall. Oh, shift, 4, and then enter. So 44, 41 volts, 7.2 ampere is set. Now let's go to the menu and see for the rest one. If I don't press enter, the highlight is at the bottom. And this is I or information. It shows the product, the serial number, firmware, and the current temperature. Just press in, exit. Now I have four sets of lithium iron phosphate batteries. These are 100 ampere hour batteries. So each battery is 3.65. 3.65 is the voltage for the charge, charge voltage times 4. Now I have to set the voltage to 14.6 volts now i'm going to 14.6 
and then let's set the current turn ampere so 10 ampere I am saving it in 8 press m store yes so now if I recall M8 came 14.6 10 ampere I'm connecting it now let me connect it when I connect it it shows the voltage here but you will see it 13.69 the battery indicator is on soon 13.67 and let me turn it on constant current is kicking in it doesn't allow 10 it's below 10 so it has reduced the voltage and now the fan is running as shows the amount of energy that is being poured into the battery let me use my unit UT240 to measure the current as you can see the voltage is so you can see the current there and the current in here it seems the battery is fully charged charging these two 18650 the charge voltage for each is 4.2 plus 4.2 is 8.4 it's set to 8.4 for two batteries 4.2 plus 4.2 i've set the current to one ampere let me connect this As soon as I connect it, you see that the battery indicator is on. Let's turn on. The charge has started it. The voltage also will be displayed 8.2. So constant current is now on. Constant current. And now this is being charged at 970 milliampere. while the battery is being charged we can set the current let's say you want to make it 1.5 as you can see now constant current is set to 1.5 and it is being charged at 1.17 no constant current no constant voltage so the battery draws more current so this is almost closer to the value as soon as it reaches 4.5 let's see what is the voltage for the battery 8.39 so around 8.40 this will stop now the output current, current is 10 ampere voltage is 30 volts let's short circuit this it has already short circuit protect so let's turn it on And 10 ampere is now being supplied at 0 0.2 so 1.79 watts is being wasted on the wire so it will not heat up because it's one watt when I disconnect it the voltage goes up so it's working very well To get the software you will click on the link that is provided and you will see this page so this is the case instruction if i double click you will see the pdf for the case go down this is for app you can right click and download save it right click download and save right click so we have the software for windows we have a installation instruction how to assemble it this is the driver for USB and this is the app now let's first connect the USB I've connected it to my computer let's see if the Windows 11 recognizes this so I'm right clicking and going to device manager 
And as you can see, I can see the software is installed. If you don't see under the COM port, run this file, CH341. So this will install it. Let me disconnect it. So the port disappeared. So indeed that was a port. And it is working. Unzip, extract inside this folder. The password that says one two three four. Let's open it and this is a file. It needs .NET Framework 4.7.2 and then this is a software. I would not install this one. Why not just getting the new one from Microsoft? And this is .NET from Microsoft and here are different languages available and then open so my computer says it's already installed so I'm gonna close it I'm checking the using my antivirus Norton security scan now let's see no threat found. Let's install it. So there is no installation. It's just a file and opens like that. And that is the interface. I like it. This is just portable. Now we should be able to connect. First, let's go to Start menu, Device Manager, and see it's COM port 5. Now this is COM port 5, everything is okay. And let's say connect. So current version is 1.3, latest is 1.36. Let's update it, I'm gonna update it now. Here we can see this is now in progress. So firmware successful. I have opened the software and the panel here so you can see it. I can turn on and off and you can see here. Let's uh, turn it on. This is on and we can see the and constant voltage is set. And we can set the brightness from here. Time synchronous. So from here we can set the time from computer. Let's do it. So it is highlighted. So this is, in this column, we see the basic information, output voltage, current over voltage over current, and temperature. This is for calibration. To set the output voltage, we can go with this arrow, which is very slow. You can move the cursor and then change it like that. Or you can enter directly, let's say 10.5 and enter it goes to 10.5 from your keyboard and the same way for the current 8 ampere enter it goes to 8 so this is here when we have when we set this to 12 the maximum scale is 12 and then you cannot go above that and the same way for the voltage is 61 so we can set it now output is on at 10.4 
or 10.5. This is a 12 volts bulb from a car. It's 10 volts, so I can connect it. There is no problem. Let's 450 milliampere. And you don't want the voltage or current. Can we zoom in? So we can zoom out, but okay, yes, hold and move and scroll up and down in here using your mouse to scale it up to see it properly. This is amazing. I wish we could move this window. No. Can we scale this window? Double click. Double click to initialize. What does that mean? Oh, double click to pass to set it back. So that's a current. If I turn it off, it should just go down and turn it on again. This is nice. We can set the language from here, English, French, German, or Chinese. And here is the settings. Product line selection. Where does it go? I clicked. When the battery is connected, this light will turn on. Now I have connected the battery. Let's disconnect the battery. This green is now turned off because I removed the wire. Now it is connected again. And we are in advanced current to 40, start voltage, stop voltage, 5, advanced, this may, must be incremental steps, let's put 2, delay 1 second, and then run. As you can see, it's now changing the voltages with the steps that we set at 2 ampere current. When it reaches, it will stop the set value. This is amazing. So this was the curve that we set initially 40 volts and in the steps of 1, it would reach to 5 and then stop. Now let's change the startup logo. If you look at this folder, we have logo for all other models. So the model that we are looking, so these are the logos, we are not worried. Let's go to startup logo, select image. So I've selected. So the image can be 320 by 240. And I'm uploading this logo. Let's see if it works. Import picture. So now boot pattern startup logo is updated. Do not disconnect the data line. It says it's being updated. Shows here forty percent up, which means perhaps. So completed. Now let's let's see the menu. Logo is off. Enter. Logo is on. Exit. Turn off. Turn. 
let's see what our logo and it worked let's set the presets they call it call out so we have one two three up to nine here data one here the voltage current over voltage over pro protection these are the values and you can set them from here 4.2 and the current that you want to charge is 1200 1.2 sure right sure out now we have already set it data 2 the same way you can set them all now let me enter 2 volts Five. This should be one second. One second. So you cannot go s less than one second. Two, five, two, three, four. Two, one, three, five, eleven. So this goes for one second. I'm entering just one quickly. Let's run. start so it goes to 11 and then after that it says 5 seconds so I'm gonna end click end to stop it and here is the function that we created let's install the app for iPhone are the power so we found it get make sure that we go to Wi-Fi so shift menu enter go to the right Wi-Fi enter and exit let's open it the app came and uh, it asked for location I hate it when they ask for location but while using up so so it says ASUS 2.4 that's the name of hotspot and then here Wi-Fi make sure it's activated number three password is one two three four and then four configure distribution successful connect at the end so now are the power location they say location must be enabled then click distribution this is your Wi-Fi this is my temporary for this test purpose and after entering the password check and connect once to connect okay and now it says this is the IP wait for the device to display IP so here we wait for the device to display the IP Now IP is shown, box IP is shown.
so on the on the IP screen also I waited it didn't work now I tried it again after IP screen I exited now let's see it doesn't work I'm not gonna bother now let me try the Android app I've created a link so just type type bitly b i t dot l y dot l y bit dot li forward slash what hour w h dash r d six zero one eight and go we go the we go to the no thanks so this is the google share and the android app is here so we will select download and you will see some warning downloading and then open yes so download anyways this is executable and it says might harm so i have no choice but to accept it now downloading file there is a warning download and then open file what happened file downloaded install app installed open so this is app Right then is asking to turn on Bluetooth. Okay, allow location, allow photo, allow asking Bluetooth. Okay, so much asking. Let's see again. App stopped close let's open the app and see this time because before it crashed uh, keep stopping app information installed but not working After installing the app here, when I open it, this screen pops up and it says app stopped. So app information, it shows all the setting, permission for location, notification allowed, installed unknown app, not allowed, allow now i've done that let's let's see again close up let's open it again does not work so did not work For, con for conclusion that I would say that this is uh, uh, very easy to use, nice bright screen with excellent features but uh, only Windows application or Windows app was useful and I was able to use it but Android app I was not even able to open the app because it was giving error maybe it's outdated or whatever but for iOS Apple app I was able to install it but it was not able to connect with the device so both mobile app did not work but other than that all the features are excellent if you're going to use it with 18 ampere because it has it can handle up to 18 ampere make sure to get uh, 60 volts 18 ampere so right 
make sure to if you want to use it with 18 ampere make sure to get 1100 watt or higher power supply the one that i have can supply 60 volts up to 12 ampere so that's what i have i cannot use it more than that make so if you learned some, something and found this useful please thumb up and also make sure to subscribe hit the subscribe button and turn on the ring bell it's really appreciated and if you want to help me please make sure to purchase it from the link below this video so i can get some commission from that as well hey welcome to product review by what hour in this video we're going to do the review of the cl24 p 180 watt capacity tester electronic load I'm going to explain the module fully uh, all the features the settings then i'm going to show you how to empty or drain your battery check the capacity for example after that i'm going to connect it to solar panel or external power supply to just monitor the energy and power after that i'm going to show you the android and this ios apple app how to set up and check it then I'm going to show you the Windows software where we can see how to set all the values and how to connect and read the data. This can act as a constant current, constant voltage, constant power, and constant resistance. Let's get started with this.